At the end of this lesson, teachers will be able to identify the object of a verb and replace it with an object pronoun. They will be able to use reflexive pronouns correctly and they will teach their students to do the same. When we read, write, or talk about any noun, it sounds strange if we keep on repeating the noun. For example, here are two paragraphs. Lala Rukh is my friend. Lala Rukh has blue eyes and brown hair. Lala Rukh loves to play cricket and is an amazing artist. Lala Rukh does not like to cook or study. I really enjoy spending time with Lala Rukh because Lala Rukh is very kind. Or, Lala Rukh is my friend. She has blue eyes and brown hair. She loves to play cricket and is an amazing artist. Lala Rukh does not like to cook or study. I really enjoy spending time with her because she is very kind. The second paragraph has less repetition and so it sounds better. This is because we used pronouns to replace some of the nouns. You already learned about pronouns in an earlier module. Today, we will explore the topic further. A pronoun is a short word that replaces a noun. Pronouns make sentences look and sound better because there is less repetition. The first time that we introduce a noun, we use the noun itself. Then, in the sentences that come afterwards, we can use pronouns. Today, we will learn about personal pronouns and reflexive pronouns. In an earlier module on composition, we learned about the subject and object of a verb. Let's revise this concept. Every sentence has a verb. Every verb has a doer, that is, the person or thing who does the action. Some verbs have a receiver, that is, the person or thing on whom the action is performed. To find the subject of a verb, we read the sentence, identify the verb, and ask who or what is doing the action. The answer is your subject. For example, Abid cried. The action word, the verb, is cried. Who cried? Abid did. In this sentence, the subject of the verb cried is Abid. Some verbs have objects, that is, the receiver of the action, or the person or thing on whom the action is being done. We will learn about two types of objects for a verb. One is the direct object, the receiver. For example, in the sentence, I hit Ali, hit is the verb, I is the subject. And Ali is receiving the action, that is, he is being hit. Ali is the direct object. To find the direct object, we read the sentence, identify the verb, 
and ask. To whom is the verb happening? The answer is the direct object. Let's look at some examples. My mother scolded my brother. The verb here is scolded. Who is doing the scolding? My mother. So, my mother is the subject. Now, who is she scolding? Or, who is receiving the scolding? My brother. My brother is the direct object. Let's practice this further. I will eat mangoes and apples today. The verb is eat. Who will eat? I will. I is the subject. What will I eat? Mangoes and apples. Mangoes and apples is the direct object. Kehkeshan sleeps late. The verb is sleeps. Who sleeps? Kehkeshan does. Kehkeshan is the subject. What does she sleep? This question does not make sense. There is no object for the verb sleeps in this sentence. Sarah loves her children. The verb is loves. Who loves? Sarah does. Sarah is the subject. Who does she love? Her children. Her children is the direct object. Amar studies every day. The verb is studies. Who studies? Amar. Amar is the subject. What does he study? We don't know. In this sentence, there is no object for the verb studies. We already learned about some personal pronouns in an earlier module. There are two different kinds of personal pronouns. Subject pronouns and object pronouns. I, you, we, he, she, they, and it are subject pronouns. Me, you, us, him, her, them, and it are object pronouns. When a pronoun is being used to replace a noun that is the subject of a verb, we use the appropriate subject pronoun. When a pronoun is being used to replace a noun that is the object of a verb, we use the appropriate object pronoun. Look at these sentences. Ali loves all fruit. Ali especially loves mangoes. Over here, the noun Ali is being repeated twice. We will replace the second Ali with a pronoun. Ali especially loves mangoes. The verb is loves. Who loves? Ali does. The subject in this sentence is Ali. Therefore, we replace Ali with the appropriate subject pronoun. He. Ali loves all fruit. He especially loves mangoes. For your information, in the first sentence, all fruit is the object. And in the second sentence, mangoes is the object. We did not replace the objects with an object pronoun because they each only appeared once. That is, there was no repetition. Now look at this sentence. Ali and I were fighting. And I hit Ali. This sentence has two parts. In the first part, Ali and I were fighting. Fighting is the verb. Ali and I is the subject. 
and there is no object. The word and joins this part of the sentence to the next part. I hit Ali. In the second part, hit is the verb, I is the subject, and Ali is the object. That is, the person who receives the action. Because Ali is the repeated word, I need to change the second Ali. The second Ali appeared as an object. So, I need to replace it with an object pronoun. Him. Let's look at another example. My father bought new clothes. My father will wear the new clothes on Eid. My father is a subject in the sentence, so we replace it with the matching subject pronoun he. The new clothes is an object in the sentence, so we replace it with an object pronoun. In this case, them. My father bought new clothes. He will wear them on Eid. Amal and Zain baked a cake in the morning. Two hours later, Amal and Zain ate the cake. Amal and Zain baked a cake. Two hours later, they ate it. Now let's learn more about indirect objects. The indirect object refers to the person or thing that is indirectly affected by the action. Rahim gave his sister a present. Gave is the verb. Rahim is the doer. What did he give? A present. His sister was indirectly affected by the action as she received a present. Therefore, his sister is an indirect object of the verb give. My aunt sent my mother a letter. Sent is the verb. My aunt is the subject. What did my aunt send? A letter. A letter is the direct object. Who was indirectly affected by my aunt's action? My mother. My mother is the indirect object. Now let's learn about reflexive pronouns. The word reflex is from the same root as the word reflection. We use reflexive pronouns when the subject and the object of a verb refer to the same person. These are the reflexive pronouns. You may have noticed that except for myself and yourself, most reflexive pronouns are formed by adding the word self to the object pronoun. With we and they, we write selves to indicate plural. If we are using the word your to talk about multiple people, we will also use the word selves and will say your selves. Using reflexive pronouns instead of regular pronouns is important because it can change the meaning of a sentence. Look at the following examples. The first sentence uses a regular object pronoun and the second uses a reflexive pronoun. In the first sentence, the object pronoun her refers to Rani. Reshma took care of Rani first. In the second sentence, the reflexive pronoun herself refers back to the subject, that is Reshma. Reshma took care of Reshma first. So we use the reflexive pronoun herself. Let's look at some examples of sentences using the reflexive pronoun. I looked at myself in the mirror. Here the verb is looked. I is the subject. Who did I look at? 
myself. I is the subject and the object also refers to me. Because my subject and object are the same, I used a reflexive pronoun in place of the object. Who did Ahmad hurt? Himself. The subject is Ahmad and the object also refers to Ahmad. Therefore, we use the matching reflexive pronoun, that is, himself. Recorded is the verb. Maria and I is the subject. Who did we record? Ourselves. Maria and I is also the direct object. We use the reflexive pronoun ourselves to refer to us. Notice that we used ourselves. This is because our refers to more than one person. So we use the plural of self, that is, selves. In the same way, if I am using the pronoun you to refer to one person, I will say yourself. For example, Heather, you can motivate yourself. If, however, I am using the pronoun you to refer to more than one person, I will say yourselves. For example, Heather and Umar, you can motivate yourselves. We already mentioned that we leave the first noun in place and do not substitute it with a pronoun. However, it is important to remember that we do not replace every noun with a pronoun. We should have some variety in our sentences. Otherwise, we'd be repeating the pronouns again and again. A good idea is to use a noun and then two to three pronouns. Then to use the noun again. Let's look at the paragraph about Lala Rukh as an example. We cannot replace Lala Rukh the first time. The next two times, we said she in place of Lala Rukh. Then, we said Lala Rukh again. After that, we used the pronouns her and she in place of Lala Rukh. This way, our paragraph did not sound repetitive. You may have noticed some examples in your workbook where we use a reflexive pronoun but the subject and the object are not the same. This is actually not a reflexive pronoun. It is something that we use to emphasize the subject. For example, I myself gave Hadia the book. Here, the verb is gave, the subject is I. What did I give? The book. The book is the direct object. Who was indirectly affected by my action? Hadia, because I gave the book to her. Reflexive pronouns are used when the subject and the object are the same. Here, I did not give myself to Hadia. I is not the object. Neither is myself. We are simply using the pronoun myself to show emphasis that it was I who gave the book to Hadia and nobody else. You yourself told me that you were coming to my house. The verb here is told. The subject is you. Who did you tell? Me. Notice that the object of the verb is different from the subject. In this sentence, I am using the pronoun yourself to stress that you told me. If I removed the pronoun yourself, I would not be changing the meaning of the sentence.
Bisma will paint the house herself. Bisma is the subject. What will she paint? The house. In this sentence, the object is different from the subject. So, the pronoun herself is not reflexive. Instead, it is showing stress and emphasizing that she does not need help. If I removed the pronoun herself, I would not be changing the meaning of the sentence. The children directed the play themselves. Directed is the verb. The children is the subject. What did they direct? The play. In this sentence, the object, the play, is different from the subject, the children. The pronoun themselves is not the object. It is not a reflexive pronoun. Instead, it is showing stress.
The children will already be familiar with verbs. Teach them to identify the subject and direct object in the way that you learned in the lesson. They should also be familiar with the seven object pronouns. With the help of a story from the book, point out the fact that pronouns are different in their object form than in their subject form. Ask the children to give you examples of sentences where object pronouns are being used. Explain reflexive pronouns to the children in the same way that you learned in this video. Be sure to explain to them why we need reflexive pronouns. Divide the children into seven groups. Give each group one subject pronoun. Ask them to write down the matching reflexive pronoun and to make sentences with it. At the end of the class, ask each group to share their sentences. Can group number one share their reflexive pronoun sentence? We have the pronoun R. The sentence that we made is the teacher likes ourselves. Hmm, I see that you used a reflexive pronoun that matched your subject pronoun. You had our, so you used ourselves. However, we learned that we only use the reflexive pronoun when the subject and the object are the same. What is the subject in this sentence? The teacher. Good. To have this sentence be correct, the subject needs to match the reflexive pronoun. What is the matching subject for the reflexive pronoun ourselves? We, we like ourselves. Good job children. Now let's move on to group number 2. For activity number 2, divide the children into groups. Give each group one noun. Then, hand them a complete set of verbs and a set of all eight reflexive pronouns. Each group has to match the correct reflexive pronoun with its noun and make fun sentences. It is best if they add words to the sentences too. Include lots of options so the children can have fun and make sure to encourage creativity. Here is a sample set of flashcards. For example, the group that has the noun the queen can make the sentence the queen thought about herself or a more interesting sentence would be the proud queen thought about herself all day and all night. Encourage the children to make as many sentences as they want and to be as creative as they want. The verbs given here are all in past tense so that the children do not have to change them depending on the noun 